Hi everyone. Today I'll be showing you how to use the Spirant Atero X network impairment box with Avalanche. As you might already know, Avalanche is a layer 4 through 7 stateful traffic generation platform, and it is capable of emulating real applications that ride on top of TCP and UDP sockets. For these reasons, the behavior of network impairments will be much more pronounced than the lower layer packet details found in a test tool like Spirant Test Center. Today we will take a look at three things. First, we'll add delay to an HTTP-based test. Second, we will apply a loss profile to our link and examine what the results look like when stateful TCP traffic is impaired. Finally, we will use the flow wizard inside the Atero X to apply network impairments to specific flows only. Taking a look, you'll see here our topology, including a Spirant Test Center C1 connected through the Atero X using two 10 gig fiber ports. Okay, let's drive into our first goal of adding delay to an HTTP based test. Opening up Avalanche Commander, I've pre-built an HTTP GET request to a server, which will return a 10 megabyte HTTP based object. First, let's establish a, base, a baseline with no impairments applied. I'm going to start this test now. After about 45 seconds, Avalanche begins running the test. Let's pull up our runtime statistics. As we can see, the network traffic is reached about 9.3 gigabits per second, pretty close to line rate. If we go into the navigation pane and we look under layer 4 TCP response time, we can see our average response time is about 0.3 milliseconds. And this is our RTT as far as TCP is concerned. So the red line here indicates the time to TCP SYN ACK, which would be the time from the initial SYN request to open the connection until we get the SYN ACK back. Similarly, the blue line is the time for our first byte, which would be indicative of 2 RTT. We can also take a look at the object size if we go under Application, Protocol HTTP, Response Time. Here we see our per URL or per page response time at about 20 milliseconds. This is the amount of time that it takes Avalanche to download that 10 megabyte HTTP object. And it is based on both the RTT and the object size. We'll go ahead and stop this test. Now we'll go into the Calnex Atero X GUI and add 50 milliseconds of fixed delay in one direction and then restart the same test. The Atero X is capable of adding up to 800 milliseconds of delay in each direction at 10 gigabit per second line rate. The first thing we'll do is we'll connect to our instrument. Set up the interfaces to use 10 gigabit ports with SFP plus transceivers. And finally, we'll go down straight to the impairments and only add delay onto the profile 8. Now, profile 8 is the catch all profile and it will match all traffic going through the Atero X. We'll go into fixed delay and we'll add 50 milliseconds. And the units are microseconds, so we'll add 50,000 microseconds. And you can see that leaves 750 milliseconds of remaining delay to be used across the other seven profiles. One thing that remains is we can see that it's turned green, meaning that we've configured something for delay or jitter. All we need to do now is hit the play button on the bottom to actually start the impairments. So we'll go ahead and restart the same Avalanche test we just ran previously. Avalanche is now running with our 50 milliseconds of delay. Going back to the runtime statistics, we'll see that our network traffic has been severely impacted. Whereas previously we were running close to 9.5 gigabits per second, now we're running closer to 220 megabits per second. This is because TCP is a self-clock protocol, and the throughput is inversely proportional to the round-trip time. We have increased the bandwidth delay product significantly, so now we're limited based on the number of users and their window size. An outside calculation shows that our theoretical limit would be 260 megabits per second. When using a test tool like Spiron Test Center, delay does not affect throughput because we aren't using TCP. 
So this is really something that was only indicative when running stateful traffic. If we take a look at our response time, now we can see our protocol response time, the amount of time to get that full object, has now been increased to 1.8 seconds. And that's related to the fact that our throughput has been reduced due to the increased delay. Also, looking at our layer 4 response times, we see now we're almost exactly at 50 milliseconds for our time to TCP SYNAC, just as we have configured. Now if we go ahead and stop this test, and we pull up the built-in PCAP capture from within Avalanche Commander, we can see that, and here the timestamps have been changed to show the inner arrival time between packets. We see exactly 50 milliseconds of time between the SYN and the SYNAC and from the get request until the first segment. So even at the packet level we can confirm that the Atero X is adding exactly 50 milliseconds of delay. Now we'll go ahead and run a second test, but this time we're going to add packet loss. So going back into the Atero GUI, we're going to stop all the impairments. We're going to go back into the fixed delay and we're going to remove all of our delay. And we're going to add a packet corruption lost packet and we'll do one percent and that was from the port one to port two direction we're gonna actually add the corruption in both directions so we'll do a symmetrical loss and don't forget to start the impairments Now it is important to note that I did add the packet loss in both directions. But in most cases, you'd want to add packet loss specifically on the server to client direction, as most of the traffic flows in that direction. Impairing the client to server direction will not really have a drastic effect on TCP because TCP is really resilient to lost acts. Traffic is running again. We'll take a look at our statistics. We'll pull back up our network layer traffic. And notice now we're only running at about 1.7 gigabits per second, whereas our baseline was 9.5 gigabits per second. So this shows that even a small packet loss with TCP has major impact on throughput performance. And there really is no formula to compute the relationship, but be aware that there is a significant amount of performance loss even at relatively low packet loss rates. If we take a look at the PCAP capture from this run, we'll see that everything is normal. And then sprinkled within, we see a lot of TCP duplicate acts. And duplicate acts are indicative of lost packets. So this proves that the Atero X is statistically dropping packets within that 1% range as we had configured. For the final part of this demo, I will use the flow wizard to apply network impairments to specific flows only. First, I'm going to stop our previous corruption impairments and be sure to disable them in both directions. Next, we're going to go and click on Select Flows, which opens the Flow Wizard in the Atero X GUI. Now, in order for Flow Wizard to work, we must have traffic running so we can capture some traffic in order to identify the flows we want to impair. So I'm going to go to Capture Flows, and then we're going to open up Avalanche Commander and then do a trial run which will basically run through the action list one time and run some test traffic as a consistency check. This does two things. First, it lets us check that our configuration is correct with an avalanche and turns on um, additional debugging tools, but it will also allow the Calnex GUI to capture our flows for classification. Avalanche has finished running through the trial run, as we can see with the two attempted and two successful transactions. In this case, we're going to be setting up a filter for specific source IP addresses. If we go into the client subnets tab, we can see we've configured um, two IP addresses, .10 and .11, both talking to a server at 1.1. We're not actually using this 1.2 server address. So if we go back into the Atero X GUI and we stop the flow wizard, it will generate and download the PCAP file. Now we can go ahead and click on the flow wizard which will import that PCAP. Now for those of you that have used Wireshark, this is very similar to using dissectors within Wireshark. Now the two flows that we want to impair selectively 
are from the server to the client. In this case, 1.1 to the 1.11 client and 1.1 to the 1.10 client. So we'll set those as two individual filters so we can individually impair each client. And one thing that's important is we've configured this as a layer 4 filter, which includes the TCP source and destination port. Avalanche will use ephemeral ports or random ports when opening TCP connections. So in order for this filter to actually work and impair specific clients, we need to convert this layer 4 filter into a layer 3 filter. And we'll do that by simply removing the destination and source port information from our filters. This is accomplished by right clicking on the column and then clicking remove. Now when we close the flow wizard, we'll see that in both directions, or specifically in the direction that we wish to impair from the server to the client, we see two additional profiles. And the Atero X allows up to eight profiles in either direction. So we'll go ahead and we'll add specific delay to profile one. We'll add 10 milliseconds, or 10,000 microseconds. And for our second profile, we'll do 100 milliseconds. And we'll make sure that the catch-all unfiltered portion doesn't have any configured profile. And we'll start the impairments. Now we'll start up traffic once again. Now that traffic is running again, we can pull up the runtime statistics. In this case, we're not interested in network traffic, but we're interested in response times. So by default, Avalanche will show the aggregate across all ports and all cores within the test. But we want to dig down deeper and see what the individual flows look like. In this case, because each 10 gig port on the C1 is given two cores and we have two IP addresses, they will be assigned in a round robin fashion to the cores. So all we need to do is look at what core 0 and core 1 are doing, and that will show us what uh, client dot 10 and dot 11 are experiencing. So if we click on the drill down button, we can say let's look at time to TCP SYNAC on core 0, CPU 0, and CPU 1. And exactly as we would expect, our first client is exactly 10 millisecond round trip time, whereas our second is at 100 milliseconds. This shows that the Atero X is capable of classifying and specifically impairing certain flows. This concludes the demonstration. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact your local Calnex representative.